Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. So um, it's my pleasure to share with you the next half an hour or so on palm oil, uh, a versatile ingredient for food and non-food applications. Okay, this is the overview of my presentation and outline. Overview of the Malaysian oil palm industry, introduction to palm oil processing, nutritional attributes of palm oil, palm oil for food and non-food applications, and a brief conclusion. Now, uh, just quickly, let me share with you an um, overview of the Malaysian oil palm industry. Okay, this is uh, for those of you who have not uh, been to um, uh, all these plantation. Now, this is the oil palm tree. Now, um, the Malaysian oil palm industry has experienced significant growth since the crop was first introduced into the country from fresh, uh, West Africa in the late 1870s. Now, the oil palm species, the commercially planted material, is from West Africa, uh, known as uh, Elis Guinnessis. Uh, when it was first introduced, it was introduced as an ornamental plant. But since then, it has proven to be one of the greatest success stories of the Malaysian economy as a commercial plant. Now, this slide shows the fresh fruit bunch from the oil palm tree, the, the fresh fruit plant is grown between the uh, oil palm trunk and the frond. So every time when you harvest a fresh fruit bunch, normally you will remove a frond. So this one, a bunch, will weigh about 15 to 25 kilogram, consisting about 1,000 to 3,000 individual fruitlets. It's orangey red in color because it contains carotene, carotenoids, which is a pro-vitamin A. Now this oil is very unique oil palm because it produces two types of oil from the meso palm, the good palm oil, and from the kernel. It's a palm kernel oil. Now both of these oils are physically, chemically, and physiologically different. Um, next, I'd like to share with you uh, is on the performance of the Malaysian oil palm industry. The oil palm industry continues to contribute significantly to the Malaysian economic development and foreign exchange um, earnings. Now this slide shows the world production of palm oil. The year 2012 total production of palm oil globally 53.67 million tons. Indonesia and Malaysia constitute about 85% of the world total production. Uh, in terms of world export, the two major countries um, major export the palm oil, Indonesia and Malaysia. Malaysia, we export more than 90% uh, of the palm oil produced in the country. Uh, we export palm oil to more than 150 countries in the world. Okay, this is uh, the CPO production versus the planted area. Oil palm planted area expanded from about 3.38 million hectares in 2000 to about 5.08 million hectares in 2012. This is many, uh, Malaysia scenario. Now, the annual production of palm oil in Malaysia increased from 0.09 million tons in the 1960 to about 18.79 million tons last year. Now, as you can see from the chart, the total planted area for oil palm in Malaysia is kept growing and any increase in palm oil production will come from increased productivity. That's why it's important that um, in MPOB, we have the R&D organization, we formulate strategies to increase productivity through various uh, R&D efforts um, uh, uh, in order uh, to meet the world demand instead of expanding the land area. So our target now, today, the palm oil yield, average national oil palm yield, uh, palm oil yield in uh, uh, Malaysia, about 4 tonnes per hectare per year. Our target is to increase to about 6 tonnes per hectare per year by 2020. Um, moving on to look at this slide, the next slide, okay. Now, oil palm is the most productive oil bearing plant species known. Oil palm contributes 42.3% of total vegetable oil production and occupies only 8.3% of the total area planted with respect to the three major crops. So, I have been occupied 10 times. Uh, the cultivated land area compared to oil palm. Oil palm requires only about 0.25 hectare to produce one ton of oil 
as compared to rapeseed or canola, 1.36 hectare, and soya bean, 2.488 uh, hectare. Therefore, oil palm uses land more efficiently than any other vegetable oil crops. Okay, this is the uh, palm oil exports to major destination. Over the years, the Malaysian palm oil has been exported to more than 150 countries worldwide and the commodity has gained worldwide acceptance due to its versatility in both food and non-food applications as well as its competitive price. Okay, the next area I'd like to share with you quickly is on the processing of palm oil. Now, this slide shows the uh, um, over, overview of the oil palm supply chain from the plantation, go to the mills, you get the crude palm oil and then uh, send it to refinery, get the refined bleach and the authorized palm oil. So this is, um, the oil is used, uh, uh, consumed locally or packed in bulk or whatever forms and uh, su supplied to the rest of the world. Now, palm oil and these fractions, um, palm fruit, just now I already mentioned, from the uh, meso cup, you got the crude palm oil, and uh, go to the refinery, you have the refined palm oil, refined fish and deauthorized palm oil, and through fractionation, you can get the olein fraction and the stearine fraction. Palm oil is semi solid at room temperature, that means 30 degrees centigrade is semi solid, it's 50% saturated, 50% unsaturated, you can fractionate it to get the liquid fraction olein and uh, solid fraction stearine. It's got a wide range of applications. Over the other side, from the kernel oil, you also go through the same process, get the refined oil and then fractionate it. Now, this fatty acid composition is a palm oil versus palm kernel oil. As you can see, palm oil is 50% saturated, 50% unsaturated. Uh, unsaturated uh, fraction is mainly the monounsaturated fatty acid, the C181. That's why it's uh, quite similar to that of olive oil. Olive oil has been uh, always referred to by medical and paramedical professions. It's the oil, healthy oil for consumption. Now over here, um, so the uh, palm oil, the major fatty acid composition is the C16, palmitic acid and the olive acid. Kernel oil is high in lauric or, uh, acid, that is C12. Now, because of this uh, different uh, fatty acid composition, so palm oil and palm kernel oil it finds it themselves into um, a lot of applications, whole range of applications. Now, composition of crude palm oil. 99% of palm oil, uh, the, main, uh, the major component is the oil, that is a triglyceride. Now, this is a crude palm oil. Yeah? Now, in crude palm oil, it also contains about 3 to 5% free fatty acids. But once this is removed, your refined palm oil actually contains less than 0.1% of fatty acid. The 1% um, uh, components in palm oil actually is known as phytonutrients. There is a vitamin E, carotenes for vitamin A. Even though it, it is present in 1%, but it contributes significantly to the nutritional attributes of palm oil. Alright, this one, fresh fruit bunch, this is in the milk. So um, you, um, the fruit will be um, sterilized, stop the enzyme activity, soften it, digest di uh, through the digestion, screw press, you get the palm oil, crude palm oil. Of course, uh, there's some effluent, but there are a lot of r and after I show you, you can, can turn this effluent into useful uh, application. Now from the screw press, after that, you can uh, separate the kernel, nut, and then you can also extract the kernel oil. Um, I'd like to mention the uh, processing of the uh, crude palm oil is uh, using physical method, never use uh, solvent, so it's very environmentally friendly, green products. Now in the refinery, you have the, uh, uh, the crude palm oil subject to the gumming, bleaching, to remove oxidative material and then de acidified to be remove the free fatty acid, de authorized to make the, uh, remove the smell. And then you got the refined bleach anti authorized palm oil. Okay, and then uh, the palm oil, again through the, uh, uh, this one, the physical method, nah, without using solvent, dry fractionation, you can separate the oily, the liquid, and the solid fraction, stearine. 
Now, um, today you can have whole range of products with different iodine value to cater for consumer's requirement. All right, moving on, just to quickly share with you the nutritional attributes of palm oil. Now, um, the nutrition values and the versatility of palm oil are renowned worldwide, especially in the edible sector. Additionally, there is now increasing awareness of the advantages of palm oil from the health perspective. This may be another major factor contributing towards the growing demand for palm oil. Well, 85% of palm oil is used um, as food. Nutritional research is a major trust area for Malaysian palm oil board. Um, using a very carefully evolved research strategy in our institution, we have focused its resources through multi-pronged nutritional trials in uh, animals and humans to prove the nutritional wor uh, worthiness of palm oil and its products. Now, these studies have yielded results that not only demonstrate the nutritional adequacy of palm oil and its products, but have also caused transitions in the science of edible oils and fatty acid effects on coronary heart diseases. Um, great strides have been uh, made over the last 25 years to, in elucidating a number of the health benefits of palm oil and its factions, that means the palm oil and so forth. It has resulted in over 200 publications in high-impact peer-reviewed journals, collaborative projects undertaken at both local and international centers of excellence, as can be seen in this slide. Well, this slide shows the regional distribution and types of research projects at the various centers of excellence worldwide, conducting the various uh, research on the, uh, such as the uh, carcinogenesis, um, cardiovascular diseases, all this research. Now, let me quickly share with you on uh, some of the uh, work. Now, um, this is on the uh, Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, and World Health Organization, outcomes of the nutritional research. So, FAO and WHO have endorsed palm oil as meeting food standards under Cortex Alimentarius Commission program. As a balanced vegetable oil, palm oil is a source of energy. It is free of, um, of cholesterol and trans fatty acids and packed with health-inducing carotenoids and vitamin E. Palm oil contains almost equal amounts of unsaturated and saturated fats. In the body, it behaves more like a monounsaturated oil and has no adverse impact on cholesterol level. Let me illustrate these points uh, by the following uh, slides. Now, this is a study done in the University of Sydney, um, well, by Professor Trusher and the group, has shown that palm oil, the liquid fraction used in the frying uh, medium, and olive oil have similar beneficial effects on blood cholesterol. In other words, uh, like uh, olive oil, yeah, it's just neutral or it, can, it won't raise the bad cholesterol or LDL cholesterol. In fact, it will raise good cholesterol such as the LDL cholesterol. Now, this is another study. Palm oil and olive oil have similar beneficial effects on blood cholesterol. Um, this one, uh, just to show that, as I already mentioned, although it's 50% saturated and 57% unsaturated, Palm oil actually is comparable with sunflower oil, which is a liquid oil, on oil lipid profile. Now, I understand that uh, in Vietnam, you also uh, grow and consume groundnut oil. So, I can, uh, uh, I'm happy to share with you palm oil, price more competitive. And in terms of nutritional attribute, palm oil is comparable with groundnut oil on lipid profile. Okay, uh, moving on, just to share with you. Just now, I mentioned that 1% of palm oil contains, um, this is a minor component, phytonutrients. These are the phytonutrients present in the palm oil, crude palm oil. Carotinus is a pro-vitamin A. The word, actually it comes from the word carrot, carrot, orangey red color. A lot of uh, pro-vitamin A because it contains alpha beta carotenes. And then uh, you have the vitamin E, tocopherol, tocotrienols. And in palm oil, you also find that it has got coenzyme Q10, 
which is 10 times more potent as the antioxidant compared to uh, vitamin E. Also have uh, squalene, lecithin, and uh, phytosterol. Now, tocotrienols is uh, present in palm oil. Um, it has got these properties, antioxidant properties, cholesterol lowering properties, anti-cancer activities, or certain type of cancer, neuroprotective properties, and uh, it helped on this uh, immune regulation. Okay, now I'd like to share with you. When you talk about vitamin E, actually it normally refers to tocopherol, especially alpha tocopherol. Um, most of the vegetable oils, they contain tocopherol, but palm oil is unique. The other oil that has got uh, tocotrienol, this palm oil is the rice bran oil. As you can see from this chart, the tocotrienol, the difference between tocotrienol and tocopherol is the uh, difference in the uh, three double bond in the side chain. So tocotrienols has shown to have uh, uh, more potent antioxidant compared to tocopherol. Um, so this uh, just now really show you, it has got a lot of nutritional attributes. Now in terms of commercial products, it's already, um, you can extract it from palm, and uh, these are commercial products, marketed to brand here, one marketed by uh, Sandabi, the other by the Hobi. Um, so this um, has shown a lot of good uh, nutritional attributes. The next one um, on the phytonutrients is the carotenoids. Huh? It's a pro-vitamin A, it's a solution to vitamin A deficiency. Globally, there are a lot of children who um, uh, suffer from vitamin A deficiency. So this can be a source to help eradicate this uh, vitamin A deficiency, the blindness diseases. And also carotenoids has shown to have anti-cancer effect, antioxidant, stimulation of the immune system, cardiovascular protection, prevention of cataract. Now this is a product. I understand they are beside this uh, uh, produced and marketed by Carotino company. Uh, Sandabi also produced this. So um, this one contains the uh, alpha beta carotene. The carotene profile is similar to that of carrot, uh, alpha beta carotene. Uh, this is the only vegetable oil containing both natural carotenes like tocotrienols, suitable for various applications. This is very interesting that I would like to share with you. Now, um, this is some studies. In South Africa, where mild mutation is prevalent in school children, this uh, big top spot is one of the signs of vitamin A deficiency in children. The carotino biscuits were made from red palm stearine, uh, the solid fraction, and fed to South African children who had low vitamin A. The carotino biscuits were able to increase the vitamin A levels in the children and the problem with night blindness was eradicated after five months of intervention. Another study that I'd like to share with you, another two studies, uh, is done in uh, India. One is on the National Institute of Nutrition in Hyderabad, demonstrated that the preschool children consuming five meal of red palm oil per day had marked improvement in the serum beta carotene level, levels. That means they uh, increased the vitamin A um, uh, uptake, and then it uh, helps to eradicate some of these problems. Another study also in another um, uh, uh, India state, that is Tamil Nadu, also fed 5 mil red palm oil per day for the school children, preschool children, for 10 months. And then um, the study showed that it had reduced the prevalence of this uh, fetal spot. Okay, applications of red palm oil, you can see that uh, can have uh, various types of uh, application. Even for uh, vagary fat, shortening, margarine for irrigation, because it already contains carotids. You can just use it for various application and formulation. Now, another interesting um, discovery that we have in uh, MPOB, just now I was just touching on the carotenoids, vitamin E, which are uh, fat-soluble, oil-soluble vitamins. We also find that we also have a lot of phenolics. When you take tea or green tea, there's a lot of phenolics, water-soluble antioxidants. So we find this in the uh, uh, water stream, in the milling process. And we are now recovering it, and we are also in the midst of commercializing, uh, commercializing this product. Now those marked in green are the biological activities proven using these phenolics or the good attributes. 
So um, the others in yellow are still uh, R and D are still being conducted. So there is another source of phytonutrients from palm. Now moving on, this is on the uh, palm oil for food applications. You will, help, you will hear more about this in more details by my colleague Dr. Miss Ganta later on. I just uh, briefly let you know about advantages of palm oil in food applications, high nutritional value, as already been demonstrated by all the renowned uh, uh, publications, uh, peer reviewed publications. This is GMO free oil, free of trans fatty acid, cholesterol free, competitive primes, high stability antioxidant properties, high. Huh? Okay, now this is a traditional food. Cooking oil, industrial flying fats, margarine, shortening, vegetable ghee, confectionate fats, ice cream, filled milk, non-dairy food products, cheese and a lot, as a source of pro A and E. Now this is on the uh, cooking oil, the unique fatty acid composition of palm oil and natural oxidants, confer good stability, oxidative stability, their longer shelf line, excellent thermal stability as well. Most other vegetable oils need to be partially hydrogenated to increase stability. But palm oil, you don't need it. If you want more solid fraction, you just fracture the egg. You get the uh, solid fraction with different IV, hard steering, soft steering for various application. Therefore, palm oil is trans free because if you subject a liquid oil for hydrogenation, you will get your produce a trans fatty acid which is no good for health but palm oil you don't need to do that now current facts on trans fatty acids tfa contributes to increased risk of cardiovascular disease who fao recommendation trans fatty acid should be limited to less than one percent of total daily energy in human diet in most eu countries and north america 2% trans fatty acid limit in dietary oils and fats. Now, um, just like to show you about this, huh? trans fatty acid, why um, it is not desirable, we should not uh, consume it, because the trans, fatty, uh, trans fat will increase total cholesterol, we don't want that, increase LDL cholesterol and lipoprotein A, this is all not good cholesterol, we do not want, but trans fat will increase that. And it will decrease good cholesterol like at low temperature. Now, um, this is the uh, um, slide showing is that, um, well, the picture will say a thousand words. You can see that palm oil is well accepted worldwide for food applications. You can see that it is in the various formulations. Every day you might be consuming it without realizing it. Okay, moving on very quickly. This is on the palm oil for non-food applications. Okay. Now about 15% of palm oil used in non-food applications. So you can have a range of personal care products. You, have, you can make it into soap. This particular one I showed you is the transparent soap made from the glycerin, palm base. And also mita ester saponate it is an active ingredient in the detergent formulation. Normally it comes from petroleum base. But it's good to substitute with palm base because it's biodegradable and environmentally friendly. Now this is the poly oil, polyurethane. Polyurethane is formed by reacting poly oil with isocyanides in the presence of suitable catalysts and additives. It is a unique material that offers the elast elasticity of rubber combined with the toughness and durability of metal. So the palm-based polyurethane are generally more biodegradable than petroleum-based Polyurethane. You can see that can be used in a whole range of application here. And then another very interesting application is on the environmental friendly palm based product. This is on the lubricants, grease. So if you use palm to formulate all this, it is food grade. And so also the agrochemicals use it as a solvent. Use palm oil, I mean the palm oleochemical as a solvent. So um, instead of using all those hydrocarbon solvent from petroleum, it is more environmentally friendly and also can use it in other applications such as palm-based printing ink. Okay, moving on on the palm biofuel. Um, I, I, I took note that um, Vietnam, by the year 2025, we may move into B1.5. B means biodiesel 1.5%. Um, yeah, 
other is 98.5% is petroleum diesel. So Malaysia, we have started this uh, industry, I mean, um, started the R&D way back in the 80s. And uh, now we are implementing the B5 program in the country. Now uh, we have got this, uh, I'd like, just like to share with you some of these. Now we have this uh, biodiesel production technologies. We have the uh, companies that uh, help us to um, produce this, uh, 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 I mean, to build this biodiesel plant. One is the Oitech, the other one is Lipocam. Now we have got two types of uh, biodiesel, winter grade and also the uh, normal grade. Huh? So winter grade, minus 21 degrees centigrade, you can use in uh, maybe Hanoi and all that well, during the temp uh, uh, cold season. Now the pump biodiesel, what, uh, uh, when it's uh, produced, actually meet the international standards. So MPOB will help uh, develop these technologies and we will build uh, several plants overseas including one in Thailand and Korea. Now this is a summer grade palm biodiesel because of the semi-solid uh, properties of palm. Um, the normal palm biodiesel, top point about 15 degrees centigrade. We have come up with another technology to produce a winter grade biodiesel, top point minus 21 degrees centigrade. Okay, now these are some of the plants that we have built. Moving on, this is on the uh, palm uh, non oil biomass. Huh? It's very um, interesting. Now this is the uh, new growth area uh, uh, on the potential, great potential is the oil palm biomass which will enhance the industry growth, competitiveness and sustainability. You can see from this uh, chart, the tape, uh, pictures, 10% by weight from the oil palm is actually uh, used as oil. 90% oh, is biomass. When we talk about biomass, when you look at the oil palm tree, uh, you have the front and the trunk in the field, and we have the fresh fruit bunch <laughs> sent to the uh, mill. You will have, after you extract your oil, you have the empty fruit bunch, you have the shell, you have the fiber. Actually, uh, in the country, in the palm oil mill, they're so sufficient in energy because they burn the mesocarp fiber and the shell as uh, energy. But we find that now um, you can have a lot of application using the palm biomass. Okay, it's okay. Um, this is uh, from the biodiesel, just now I share with you. This is on the second generation biofuel. This is from the non-oil um, sources. So these are some of the area is emerging. Production of seam gas, bio oils, pump bioethanol, and also um, synthetic diesel. You can, uh, but this is all at the pilot plant scale. Okay, um, just now I was talking to you about this uh, palm oil meal effluent. If you have the meal, then you will have some of this palm oil meal effluent. We can turn it into energy and uh, can connect it to the grid. So, um, because uh, in Malaysia, we believe strongly in sustainability. Sustainability is the key to the continued success um, of uh, the palm oil industry. So, this biogas from the palm oil mill contains methane as well as carbon dioxide as a source of energy. Now, this is uh, another whole range of applications from palm biomass. Just now talking about biomass for energy. Palm biomass, you can also use it for various wood-based uh, applications such as biocomposite, uh, pulp, uh, medium density fiberboard, plywood, and so forth. And uh, recently, we also look at extracting a lot of fine chemicals from palm biomass. Ladies and gentlemen, the last area that I would like to touch on is actually on the sustainability of palm oil. So, um, in Malaysia, our goal in the oil palm industry is to have a balanced development in social, economic and environmental aspects. We believe these pillars can coexist in harmony. Now, um, this is the, uh, uh, in achieving the holistic approach, MPOB has developed and launched codes of practices along the oil palm supply chain to ensure sustainable development of Malaysian oil palm industry. The codes of practices uh, certification was introduced few years ago. It is a system tool for food safety, quality assurance, and environmental protection and sustenance. 
part of practice is set to enhance the sustainable practice of the Malaysian pharma industry to meet the demands of an increasingly environment-conscious market. This consists of seven sectors in the industry, as shown in this slide. Okay, um, uh, uh, still on the sustainability, I'd um, like to share with you the R&Ds conducted in MPOB on the live psychiatric assessment, or the uh, commonly known as the uh, uh, LCA. Now, live psychiatric assessment is a scientific tool to quantify the impact on the environment of a product or a process along the life cycle of the product or process. The life cycle assessment study is useful to identify the potential of environmental impact associated with the production of the product and gate its greenhouse gas emission. It can be used to suggest mitigation measures to reduce or overcome the environmental hotspots. Therefore, life cycle assessment study is able to contribute to sustainable development of oil palm industry. So, uh, MPOB, we have uh, completed a full LCA of the palm oil supply chain. LCA project covers both upstream and downstream processes for oil palm production, from nursery to seedling to palm oil, palm connectate, refined oil, and biodiesel. Now, all this and, and also the finished products, huh? such as cooking oil and, and so forth. So the slides, uh, all, no, all these studies have been published in the International Peer Review Journal. Okay, this one, yeah, just to share with you, on the GHG emission. Um, now, based on the MPOB LCA study, GHG emissions of refined palm oil is lower as compared to refined rapeseed and soybean oil. So the greenhouse gas emission can be even lower if biogas is captured at the palm oil mills. We capture the biogas for energy uh, application. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, so um, in conclusion, palm oil is a very important food source and provides needed energy to the world population. It has a wide range of applications in the food industry without the presence of trans fat. The unique for the acid composition of palm oil makes it a nutritious and yet functional oil in various food applications. Palm oil behaves like unsaturated oil, example olive oil, sunflower oil and groundnut oil. Evidence has been obtained to suggest that dietary palm oil reduces the risk parameters to cardiovascular diseases. The phyto nutrients such as carotene, vitamin E, are additional health benefits to the oil. And the unique composition of palm oil, as well as the palm kernel oil, also offers potential for use in non-food application. The steady supply of quality Malaysia, uh, Malaysian palm oil will help meet the increasing global demand for oil effects, including Vietnam. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we like to invite you to participate in our event of the year in November in Malaysia. This is our signature event once in two years. This year, November in Kuala Lumpur, uh, normally is attended by about 2,000 participants for, from all over the world. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm also happy to share with you that NPOB, Malaysian Palm Oil Board, also provides technical advisory services for product development and transfer of technology. In addition, we also provide training courses such as palm-based margarine production and palm oil familiarization program. This probably can be part of the collaborative project between MPOB and uh, interested parties from Vietnam. With that, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.